Today, I am extremely happy to be speaking with the one and only Steve Grantley. Steve, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Derek? Uh, a lot better now that I've got you on the line. I've really been a big fan uh, for a long time and uh, really excited at the opportunity to speak with you. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for asking me to do it. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks a lot to our mutual friend, uh, Paul, right, for uh, setting this up. That's right. Yeah, Paul's a good man from Kick Down the Doors PO. He's a good lad. Yes. Thanks, Paul. Uh, where are you located right now, Steve? I live in Bicester, which is um, Oxfordshire in England. So it's about um, an hour and a half outside London in the Oxfordshire countryside. It's, it's beautiful. I used to live in London, but it just got too manic. I couldn't park outside my own home, and I just wanted to get out of the city. So this was perfect. Awesome. I know that you, of course, are in Stiff Little Fingers. You also have a band called RTZ. And before I get to those bands, do you have like a history of music that started out as a young man, perhaps, that we don't know about? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I started out, uh, you know, in local bands and stuff. But I, first of all, I used to play for uh, um, Thames Television. It was a TV company, had a big band. And um, I was uh, I was hired as their big band drummer when I was about 18 or 19. So that was my first sort of professional thing. I wanted to, I was a rock drummer, but I kind of got offered this job and took it um, all the time. I was doing that. I was doing sort of local rock band stuff. Um, but then I answered that and add in a music magazine called Melody Maker. And it was for Jake Burns and the Big Wheel. And Jake is the lead singer with Stiff Little Fingers. So my connection with Jake goes right back to 1983. Um, wow. So, yeah. Uh, and, you know, since working with Jake, I've worked with pop bands. I've worked with Julian Lennon and their soul star, Alita Adams. I've worked with John Deacon from Queen and Billy Duffy from The Cult. And I was in The Alarm. Um you know 68 guns where we hide him when the storm broke that band i was in that band for 10 years so i've done quite a lot you know yeah you know i've had uh mike peters from the alarm has been on the show before i'm a big fan of the alarm oh right oh i see yeah he's, uh, unfortunately he's, he's just he's been unwell recently so we wish him well and uh, wish him a speedy recovery but yeah i was i worked with mike for two years in his electric band and then 10 years as part of the alarm Wow! How about Julian Lennon? How did that How did that work out? Uh, that was great. I was in a uh, uh, that was a, again. I was just referred by a, by. A, uh, I was in a band called Horst, who were a, a band from Scotland called Horst. Their bass player started working with Julian. Julian was looking for a drummer, um, and so they asked me to join. Uh, I mean, the thing was was that when I did when they phoned me up to say, you know, are you going to be available to do some Julian Lennon dates? They asked me if I was a Beatles fan. I said, uh, uh, and I said, do I need to be a Beatles fan? And I said, oh, are you a Beatles fan? And I said, well, to tell you the truth, no, not really. I'm more of a Led Zeppelin who kid. You know, I'm a punk rocker. You know, I'm the Sex Pistols and the Clash. And they said, oh, that's a good thing. And I went, well, why is that? And they said, well, the last five or six drummers he's had have all been massive Beatles fans, and they've done nothing but pester him with questions about his dad. So... I got the job because I wasn't a Beatles fan. <laughs> wow. That's, a... <laughs> that's, not really, that's, not really tr that's not really true, but I wasn't a Beatles fan, and they were glad I wasn't a Beatles fan because I, I didn't pester him with stupid questions about his father. <laughs> that's wonderful. How did you come to work with John Deacon from Queen? I was in a band, I was in a band called Eighth Wonder, which is a really, a really ultra-pop band, and we were re recording a second album, and... Um, the producer was a guy called Steve Brown and Steve Brown had recorded, he recorded the first Wham album. He did the love album for the cult. And we, we needed a, like a really good bass player for this track we were working on. And he said, Oh, I know John Deacon. Do you fancy getting John Deacon down? I was like, what from Queen John Deacon? He was like, yeah. And I went, yeah, I'm a massive Queen fan. So John came in and we, he and I cut the rhythm track together and it was an absolute pleasure. Just incredible. You know, True oh, legend God, in the studio, you know. I mean, that, that I've been a, I've been a fan of of Queen since I was a kid. You know, I was, you know, the, I got all the, all of the the first six or seven albums were uh, you know were, were my favourites, and uh, so to have him play on the track and to actually work with him was such an honour. Wow, that's amazing! I love Queen as well, so that's really cool. Yeah. Um, 
Were you a fan of Stiff Little Fingers by the time you joined them in 1996? Um, you know, I knew of Stiff Little Fingers and I liked some tracks, but I, they, they weren't like my favourite band. I knew them and I thought they were good, but I wasn't a massive, rabid fan. I, to be honest, I was much more of a Sex Pistols and Clash fan than I was Stiff Little Fingers. And that's not to downgrade Stiff Little Fingers, but that's who I was listening to, you know, in like 76, 77. And Stiff Little Fingers didn't put their first album out until 79, so... You know, I was already a died in the War Pistols fan by the time that album came out. But it's I'm highly right. honored to be I'm highly honored to be in the band. I mean it's an incredible band with an incredible history and to be part of that um is it, 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 uh, like I say, I'm so honored. And they both are great albums, never mind the Bullocks and in, inflammable material as well. Oh yeah, I mean I, I think that that's I think that's the album that sells uh, the most on a regular basis because I think if you're gonna, if you're a young kid and you're getting into punk rock, you've got to have the first Damned album, you've got to have the first Pistol, you've got to have Nevermind the Bollocks, you've got to have you know the first couple of Clash albums, and you've got to have Inflammable Material if you're gonna if you're gonna absolutely. find out what punk rock is really all about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, were you uh, friends with any of the other guys that had previously drummed for Stiff Little Fingers, like Dolphin Taylor or any of those guys? Yeah, I knew Dolph. I didn't know Jim. Um, I knew Dolph. Uh, we'd been, you know, we'd gone out, uh, you know, because Jake and I were friends and uh, and we'd all hung out together. So yeah, I mean, I was a big Dolphin Taylor fan. I think Dolphin is one of the best drummers Britain ever produced, and I think he's uh, highly underrated. I, I was, uh, it, it, they were big shoes to fill when I had to sort of go in and and uh, and fill Dolph's shoes. Uh, I, I respect him a great deal as a drummer. He's a great player. And you've been with uh, Stiff Little Fingers longer than any other drummer, of course, over 25 years, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm 25 years in. Didn't think it would last that long. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's unbelievable. I can still remember my first show with Stiff Little Fingers. And every year I just thought, well, how lot much longer can this last? You know? um, and, you know, 15, 16, 17, 21, 20, you know, here we are now, 25 years in. And, uh, you know, in touch with the band, we... we get on great we're still creating new stuff um yeah it's just a it, it's a brilliant band to be a part of that's beautiful man um do you have any favorite places to play with stiff little fingers yeah, well, we played the the, uh, the the barrowland ballroom in in glasgow and we play that stiff little fingers play that at, uh, the 17th of march which is st patrick's day play that every year and i mean i think they've done it 30 years on the trot i've done 25 years uh, consecutively at that venue on that date and it's a very very special night and we kind of build up to the barrel land night it's like you know five days till the barrows four days to the barrows so that's a fantastic place to play and we've just started over the last five or six years we've started to play a place called custom house square which is uh, in the center of belfast um in northern ireland and and we do our own sort of we do our own um festival so we've had people like we, we used to have three band supporting us and we've had like the dam supporters the stranglers we've had the ruts we've had the buzzcocks uh, you know um this year we had the undertones and that's our own show and that's in the middle of belfast and that is a very special night as well because when Jake, when we play alternative Ulster in Ulster in front of a in front of that crowd, it's just uh, m a, like a, a, a tingly feeling that you get down your back. It's just a mind blowing experience to play that song in in Belfast. But people come from all over the world. It's like a pilgrimage to Belfast, and Stiff Little Fingers basically take over the whole area. You can't go into a bar or a restaurant or walk down the street without seeing every person in SLF t-shirts and hoodies and jackets it's it's a pretty incredible day so that's another place that i really like playing that's incredible yeah alternative ulster i recall being a young punk rocker in the early 80s and my band in uh, usa illinois was covering that song alternative right. ulster. yeah yeah it's uh, and like i say when jake up those opening chords and jake this year he said um i think this should be the new national anthem and he starts alternative ulster the place just went crazy you know <laughs> And it's great for those guys as well. It's, you know, it's, it's brilliant for Ian and I, uh, but for the two original members who were, you know, playing those small clubs in Belfast and people saying, oh, you'll never get anywhere and you'll never amount to anything. And then they go back to the Conquering Heroes to Belfast and the place is full of 
stiff little fingers t-shirts and hoodies as i say that's a that's a great feeling for those guys and i mean it's a great for us but for them it just might must be mind-blowing that is amazing now can you tell me about your other group uh, rtz we recently played black heart of love on the show and it's a great song by the way and Thank you're the you. front man yeah you're the front man of that band are you not drumming for that band well i, I play drums in the studio um oh but but well, so I play drums in the studio on it, but I but I I write the songs um, mostly. I write the songs. It's sort of been my project. You know, I've, I started it in '98 with a guy called John Magna. John uh, went away for a while, so he wasn't in the band for a while. And then a, a guy called Jonesy he joined me, and we and now we've kind of got like a regular lineup. But but when we go out to play live, I'm up the front with the guitar and singing, and Danny Farrant from the Buzzcocks is our drummer. So. Uh, yeah, that's how, that's how we go out live. But in the studio, I play drums. Have you um, ever considered writing a, a book? I have. I mean, I, I have because I've done quite a few things. Now, I've written books in the past. I wrote a book about um, the glam rock band Slade, the British band Slade, which was called uh, which was called Come On, Feel The Noise. Also wrote a book about The Who, uh, which was called The Who By Numbers, a song by song guide to The Who. So I have thought about it. But at the moment, I still want to have a few more adventures before I knuckle down and write a book. That's a great idea. Um, I've heard of those books, by the way. Um, okay. What music kind of music do you listen to? Obviously, you're an old school punk guy, but what uh, what kinds of music do you listen to today? Anything in particular or, or diverse? It's kind of diverse. I think we all have eclectic tastes. And, um, but I mean, really, my, my original taste before punk rock came along, uh, you know, my first my first gig was The Who. Uh, I mean, so the Who and Led, the Who, Led Zeppelin, and glam rock was was you know, so you're talking T Rex and Slade, and you know, uh, and then and definitely Bowie. Bowie was a massive influence, you know, New York Dolls, you know, the prototype punk rock band. Uh, so before oh, yeah. punk, I was listening to those bands and still very much enjoy, you know, Quadrophenia by The Who is one of my favourite albums of all time. I absolutely love Led Zeppelin. I love Jimmy Page's guitar tone and Plant's voice and, yeah, of course, Bonham's drumming. Um, but I listen to a wide range of things. I've just been getting into a bit of PJ Harvey at the moment, and she was an artist that passed me by, so I've been listening to a bit of PJ Harvey. But... Um, yeah, it can be anything. You know, I'm a Thin Lizzy fan as well. So I kind of just, uh, you know, on my iPod, I just flick between lots of different things. It's a very eclectic taste, but I think as you get older and if you've got an open mind and, and you're musical, you like all sorts of things. Oh, for sure, for sure. I'm still jealous that you got to see Keith Moon live with The Who. <laughs> yeah, I did. I saw it. It was, it was 1976, and it was The Who put the boot in at Charlton Athletic Football Ground. And... Uh, um, the sensational Alex Harvey band was on the bill and Little Feet and Streetwalkers and it was just and it just you know it's like a cliche it changed my life man it really did change my life and I already knew I wanted to be I already was a drummer I'd had a drum kit since I was 11 I knew where I was going I knew what I was doing but when I saw that that night I was like I'm, that's who I'm going to be you know uh, and I think I was about 14 or 15, 15 I must have been, I was like, that's who I'm going to be, that's what I'm going to do, and there was nothing going to stop me, nothing, you know, and, and I was known in school as Steve the drummer, everybody just, you know, I drove everybody mad, as most drummers do, tapping on desks and things, and uh, everybody, no one was surprised, I did a school reunion in September, and the people there was from my class when we were 15, 16, they went, we always, we always knew you'd be a drummer, didn't know if you'd be successful or not, but we always knew you'd be a drummer, because you never stopped tapping on things when you were in school. <laughs> That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. I also, I also must admit, I do like, I do like uh, uh, more jazzy things. I definitely might like Miles Davis. I'm a huge Prince fan. I love Funkadelic and Parliament and James Brown. So I listen to that a lot. Um, and I, but I also listen to ACDC and the Foo Fighters. And it's like I said, it's a very eclectic Thing right across the board depending on what, on what mood i'm in if i just want to sit down quiet and read i'll have something quiet and in the background if i'm on an adrenaline rush i'll you know on a friday night before i go out i'll you know i'll listen to to the who or something brilliant um i'd like to ask what is uh what does the future hold for you and the bands what's coming up next anything that's on the on the plate right now well, yeah, I mean, at the moment, I'm promoting um, uh, the, the, new, the new album by RTZ, which is Z Nation, and that's going great. I mean, it's being played on so many radio stations, it's, it's got fantastic reviews. You'd think I was, bri I was bribing 
these guys who are writing these reviews. You think it was my mum writing these reviews because they're so good. <laughs> Wow, this is, you know, this is great. So, and we're going to be doing some live dates in December with a band called Spirit of Destiny in uh, in the UK. Uh, and then it, uh, that's RTZ. And then in the new year, in March, Stiff Little Fingers will be doing their usual annual big tour that we do, which, which will take in the Barrowland and uh, the Roundhouse in London and various other places. Um, and so that's the next that's the next big thing. Finish off promoting this RTZ record, which will go into the new year. Do these dates of Spirit of Destiny, and then Stiff Little Fingers time comes around in March next year, and we do our, our our big British tour. Not sure what happens after that, though. That's great that you have so much lined up. I'm, I'm super honored to speak with you, everyone. Zed Nation is the new album by RTZ. You can also jump online and find stuff rather easily these days. So RTZ, uh, also, of course, Stiff Little Fingers. We are speaking with Steve Grantley, legendary drummer uh, in England. And Steve, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with the uh, Church of Rock radio show today. Oh, Derek, it's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure, mate. And thank you so much for playing the record. I I appreciate your support. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super honored. We'll definitely get it on again for you. And uh, best of luck to you, Steve. And I hope to talk to you uh, down the road again. Thank you, Derek.